I was born and raised under the Israeli occupation. I lived under the Israeli occupation all my life. Uh, till uh, I left Palestine to uh, uh, pursue education. So it is a, a beautiful town. Uh, the people are very welcoming. They are uh, very close to each other. Um, they cooperate. Um, they always look out for each other. So it is a kind of town where, where you really feel the love, you feel the support, uh, you, you feel the care because um, uh, the harsh conditions that we live in forced us to come together as one community. But you always miss your culture, your language, your traditions, your friends that you grew up with, the, the, the olive trees that uh, you used to see and, and, and we grew under the olive trees and the fig trees. Uh, you see your grandmother, your great, your great grandmother. You see the animals <laughs> that you you uh, used to see, like your the donkey and the sheep. So so it is absolutely. There's so much things that uh, I miss, uh, and I wish I can uh, be able to go more often. Unfortunately, it is not feasible or possible, but uh, I do miss it. You know, I grew up in a family, I will say middle class family, uh, a family that my father uh, uh, owned his own business. He was in the olive wood carvings. He made all these statues and nativity scenes and camels and donkeys. So when the tourists will come to visit the Holy Land, that was his business. He will manufacture all these handmade olive wood carvings to sell to the tourists. And that's how he provided for our family. Uh, we uh, education was very important uh, to our family, so they made sure we went to the to school uh, and uh, graduated the schools. That was very important. Even though sometimes going to school was a big risk, uh, you go to school and uh, uh, there will be uh, demonstrations or uprising. Uh, the Israeli soldiers will come into the school, they start shooting and firing tear gas. Um, uh, so it, it wasn't a very pleasant experience going to school because you never knew what to expect uh, and how the day will be will unfold. But uh, we did the best out of it. Uh, we went to school, we graduated, we worked hard, um, uh, we took care of each other and uh, we knew that uh, uh, the only way to survive is, is to be uh, one hand and that's how the whole uh, town is, is really like one hand. Yeah. There's many memories I can delete uh, but the, the one that I would like to delete is uh, in 1989 uh, at 3 in the morning. Uh, I was sleeping and my father came, woke me up and he said don't be afraid, don't be afraid. I said what's going on? He said, the Israeli soldiers are here to pick you up. Uh, you are being placed under arrest. So I was arrested, um, was taken to prison, uh, was put in prison for 58 days in a small cell and interrogation. And it was a very difficult, hard experience where I was interrogated every day, beaten up every day, uh, tortured every day. And uh, uh, at the end of the 58 days, uh, there was an uh, order for deportation for me to leave the country. So that is, uh, uh, was a very difficult experience. Uh, not only difficult, but left uh, many scars. And in, in a way also shaped who I am today. Uh, I start thinking about uh, why this is happening and uh, uh, why they are inflicting these kind of pains on us. Uh, so it made me think about uh, how I can become a peacemaker, a uniter, a bridge, a bridge builder, um, and use that experience and the pain of that experience to help me to do something good. A lot of people who've been in prison, came out of prison, they want to take revenge, they want to do more, they want to go and, and do something to hurt. For me, it was completely different and opposite. I wanted to do something where uh, I can do uh, more impact by doing something good. So, uh, in this community, uh, the way I am known and recognized, and the way my church known and recognized in this community, as we are the bridge builders, we are able to bring 
everybody together, to speak together, to to uh, uh, sit around the table. Uh, so we have the Christians, the Muslims, and the Jews, the elected officials, the police. We are able to bring all these people together to sit on the same table, united uh, uh, together, to address issues of concern. Uh, so we don't allow our differences and our uh, the situation back home to divide us here, but to unite around issues that really will need our attention. Uh, it does not mean that we forget about uh, what's happening back home. No, we are very passionate, we care, we are the voice of the voiceless, we carry the stories with us everywhere we go. We share these stories and we invite people to pray for peace and justice. Uh, I believe the only way uh, to achieve peace that we need to free the Israelis from their fear. The moment we are able to free them from the fear that we are trying to destroy them and annihilation, we can achieve peace. And and listen, there is nobody doesn't need to live in peace. Uh, everybody wants to live in peace. So I hate to see friends of mine are in prison. I hate to see friends of mine who have been shot or been killed. Uh, there is no need for that. Uh, we had we have seen enough war, destruction, and death. And enough is enough. I never understood why I was arrested. So I was uh, 58 days in interrogation and 58 days they never told me uh, why I was arrested. They wanted me to tell them why I was arrested. And I said, I don't know. Uh, so they uh, have their own torture, um, and both physical and psychological warfare. And I said to myself, uh, I'm not going to say something that I didn't do. I know a lot of people who went to prison um, and they didn't do, uh, but they claimed they did something just to get out of the interrogation. They can be sentenced and throw in jail. This way because the, the torture was tremendous. So, uh, so I made a commitment to myself, no matter what happens, uh, I'm not going to confess to something I didn't do. Uh, so, uh, so I kept thinking about uh, why this is happening to me. So I, I enjoy going around, speaking, sharing my story, uh, because that is uh, part of my identity and my memory. And without these two, uh, I don't think uh, uh, you can go far in life. You gotta always appreciate where you come from, and what you have, and inspire what you can do for the future.